evening. I would like to well give you a cool welcome uh, to on behalf of Ahmedabad Book Club, Karma Foundation, and all our readers. A very warm welcome to the India's best-selling author Antar Atreya. Uh, you, Antar, I don't know how how do I address your evening because uh, Delhi's evening is definitely having mood swings, right? So you need to tell me right now what is Delhi's weather, and that's how I can address your evening. Well, today the weather is like uh, you know pretty predictable. It's a quite uh, timid and warm day. Uh, like yesterday, it was a, a very different kind of weather here in Delhi. There were hailstorm and a lot of rain, but today it's you know pretty warm and shining. Great, then a warm evening to you and welcome all our viewers. Um, uh, today, uh, you know, uh, there might be you might have heard the word, phrase "heart to heart talk." But definitely today I'm talking um, with a physical heart because Antar means heart in Assamese language. And uh, uh, yes, uh, he, uh, a graduate, turned his heart, uh, his atheist heart to writing a best-selling novel in a mythological series that is Chronicles of the Mortal Vishnu. And with that, he has definitely gripped millions of hearts. Uh, authenticity being one of his attractive characteristics, he, uh, he embraces the conversations and creativity within himself. And then he backs, backs up with research and uh, his own thoughts to give quintessential meaning to the words that he puts down together. So a very warm welcome, Antar. And today uh, we are going to talk about breaking myths about Indian mythology, right? Absolutely. Thank you, Kosha, for that, you know, extravagant uh, introduction. And I'm really honored and humbled. And uh, obviously, I'm really excited to talk uh, about, uh, you know, certain myths uh, progressing in the Indian mythology and, you know, through Ahmedabad book club facebook page today i would you know love to you know share some of my insights about uh, religion and as far you know what uh, we call the old school of mythology thought uh, that's what we're going to discuss today and i'm really excited and you know it's uh, it should be a fun session Great, great. Indian mythology is definitely very varied and uh, rich, uh, you know, in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms of God, in terms of languages, everything. It's it's super, super rich, super uh, varied, uh, you tell me. So uh, there are definitely so many myths about it. Uh, okay, uh, we start uh, with the thing that... Um, uh, you being a fresh graduate to uh, atheist and then turn to the India's bestseller mythological author. So I want to know something about your journey. I mean, we all know that uh, not your love notes, but your parents' love notes were inspiration for your writing. So do tell us about the short stories that you published at the age of 14 and sold, you know, 500 good number of copies. Do tell us something about your journey, first of all. Uh, well, uh, if I talk about my first book that got published when I was 14, it was uh, known as Classic Suspense Stories. Mostly it had... Yeah, you know, stories uh, revolving around detection, investigation, and uh, horror. Uh, because there I, I cannot see you yeah can you hear me uh, yeah i can hear you like is it fine now i can see you back uh, no now 
okay yeah is it fine is it fine uh, yeah, please uh, you need to just restart your answer no, no, about your journey absolutely. yeah uh, so like uh, talking about my first book which was classic suspense stories it was a collection of you know stories uh, centering on uh, horror detection and investigation basically uh that was because that was the uh, genre that uh, actually i fell in love with uh, when i was a kid i used to read a lot uh, of a lot of stories uh, you know especially in the genre of you know investigation and uh, crime fiction or um you know uh, horror thriller stuff like that so uh, mm. that was the reason i wrote the book and like uh, luckily you know i got it published and it sold around 500 copies and it was i mean uh, it was a good start uh, it was something that you know really help me to you know uh, gain certain bit of confidence that you know uh, there is something uh, there's some sort of you know uh, advantage or uh, likeliness in my writing that uh, people would you know probably love to keep on reading that you know selling 500 copies uh, back then uh, it was a small thing but uh, at the same time it was a big thing for me as well you know because it uh, basically paved the um, my doorway doorway ahead for you know uh, into the world of literature that would what i would say right. and apart from that you know in 2018 i won a contest to co-author with durjay datta for a collection of short stories it was a Super. you know contest uh, uh, organized by engage uh, pocket deals and uh, yeah, that was another something that you know totally uh, gave me the necessary confidence and uh, at the same time the uh, self belief to go ahead with writing uh, and you know probably take it up as a full time career option so these are the two particular events that really inspired me actually at the age of teenage where you know uh, kids are generally glued to the uh, harry potter and kind of stuff you actually wrote uh, the stories which gave you confidence to write the uh, book absolutely like you know obviously when i was uh, too much into movies and books and you know other hmm. stuff like that but at the same time I, as you know i always uh, had this uh, inherent uh, interest to write so it just happened mm-hmm. great uh, uh, how will you describe your book this mythological book chronicles of mortal vishnu to the person who is a non reader or especially uh, not reading the mythology uh, mythological books matlab sirf uh, stories they have heard from their dada dadi nani etc they don't read it so how will you describe the book to them because you know uh, generally when it comes to mythology or religion today's generation generally feel it a kind of boring not too interesting subject uh well uh, first of all uh, about my this book chronicles of the mortal vishnu if i you know have to give out a blurb or something of that sort that would be that it's basically uh, based on the age old theme of good versus evil but uh, obviously the story is fresh and it is a mixture of everything i mean there is a bit of suspense in it there's a bit of thrill in it it's an out and out action uh, action saga as well it has got revenge it has got you know words of philosophy it has got words of wisdom uh there is romance there is bromance i mean everything so it's a complete amalgamation of you know i'd say different kind of uh d- different genres to a bit and uh, people with different uh, likings would love to read the book because it is a story a saga that expands across thousands of years and therefore uh, and also the book is a thick book so you know uh, uh there are a lot of plots uh, subplots and you know uh, further uh, uh, secondary and uh, you know uh, pr- uh, sort of other auxiliary narrative styles uh, and narrations in the books and different perspectives in it so i would like like to you know say it as a book that would probably you know uh, make you believe in fantasy or make you travel to another world and it will not uh, necessarily probably just uh, make you think about god but it will rather make you think uh, about other philosophical questions and uh, about the ideals of uh, you know uh, uh, about the certain ideals upon which religion and uh, um, the human civilization is basically built upon so all those kind of things are uh, together in this book so it's a complete amalgamation package of everything that how you know how the uh, great so it, it might be in the language which is easy or you know and because ancient language is too difficult to understand and read by uh, the layman yes absolutely okay uh your this uh, book is super hit 
not only uh, among the adult readers but among the teenagers or say uh, 20 something kind of age uh, people and you also um, you know wrote the book and are the best seller at the very young age of uh, 24 years so what is the secret which uh, keeps these these uh, you know set of readers glued to your book uh, when i uh, believe that you know uh, a story should be a story that travels across different genres that is something really important i mean uh, a particular book sh- even if it's a romantic book it should not be only about romance there should be something else in it like you know uh, probably a bit of thrill or probably a bit of tragedy or something of that kind you know uh, it's very really important that your book uh, caters to the needs of different sort of readers uh, different sort okay. of readers get some sort of flavor uh, from the story so that's something necessary and that's something i guess um uh went good with my book uh this plotting uh the the extravaganza of the story the saga like uh, you know uh, portrayal of the scenes and all everything worked together and at the same time i believe uh, it is also because it is uh, based on a tried and tested formula of good versus evil hmm so when there is a story that revolves around the theme of good versus evil then probably i guess uh people across all age groups can connect with it and uh, in okay. a way uh, they can you know relate uh, uh the predicaments shown in the story with their situations or with the current contemporary situations in some way or the other way so that is what i guess you know uh, made my book popular uh, and uh, readers loved it but uh, like because at this age generally those uh, uh, generation like to read the uh, love story or the harry potter kind of uh, stuff the games of thrones kind of stuff and still your book is popular in that group that is a kind of great achievement or the content of the book is such uh, that keeps them glued you know Okay now we know so, that secret but uh, I'd also like to tell you one thing here that uh, you know yeah. uh, it's 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 generally if I, if you're talking about myths you know it's generally a kind of myth that uh, you know people perceive that young people teenagers or you know young adult people they don't read mythology that's uh, that's no longer the case in india they love reading mythology especially uh, mythology comes under the broad genre of you know fantasy so uh, if hmm. you give a good fantasy story it does not matter even if there is somebody who believes in uh, you know religion or believes in stuff like that or not they are going to take it at least as a fantasy story so i tried to develop the story in a way that you know it's a fantasy uh, it's more of a fantasy saga you know there you won't find many references related to you know ambiguous uh godly things and things have been presented in a very scientific and believable logical way so these are the other things that uh, you know i believe uh, made this uh, 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 my made my book popular among the you know teenage mm-hmm. groups or young adult group of yeah. readers and uh, that's why even uh, also the other mythological books also you know are very popular among the same age group because uh, somewhere or the other they all come under the category of fantasy and fantasy, fantasy. i mean uh, young people love fantasy yeah so uh yeah okay uh, so i mean writing such a, a book on the uh, rich heritage or one of the rich heritage of india you might have done a lot of research reading and uh, knowing our vedas our ancient scripts with uh, not much of drawings and the hard language and no colors how much or how how much how did you do that research to see like uh, it's not necessary that when you are researching upon uh, you know the old uh, indian or uh, hindu school of thoughts or hindu school of you know uh, principles uh, it's not necessary that uh, you need to take up the, those texts as it is in the you know um, like uh, you don't need to go and you know dig in deep i mean uh, most of the things are available on the internet uh, and uh, the bhagavad gita is translated uh, pretty well in several languages by many renowned people i read the english version i also read the mahabharata like even that was in the english version obviously but uh, mm. you know uh, yeah i have an understanding of shlokas and stuff like that because i come from a brahmanical uh, family Background. so like uh, okay. uh, 
so that is the reason why uh, as a kid i was taught about slokas uh, i do you know uh, know about 12 to 13 slokas and their meanings and interpretations so uh, a bit of those kind of things were already there in me because that was the way i was uh, brought up and the brought rest uh, was because you know i started questioning things uh, I, as you know you know as you have also told uh, i was an atheist so uh, an atheist is a person or sorry an atheist is a person who questions you know uh, Things, uh, or the or looks for you know the logic behind uh, arguments that are being made. So I right. seek for answers, and uh, while seeking for answers, and while seeking for you know also for some sort of comfort, self comfort, uh, I ended up you know reading about uh, the Bhagavad Gita. I ended up reading the Mahabharata, and mostly they both uh, helped me. Like uh, I have not read the Vedas a, a lot, but yeah, I do have a gist of you know knowledge and a gist of you know. Uh, know how of what is there in different vedas and what kind of stuff okay. uh, they deal with so uh, yeah it was a uh, it was not a difficult uh, phase for me to research uh, for this book it was uh, like um, an exercise uh, uh, it was like an exercise for me for my you know personal life it was nothing personal uh, professional i just read hmm. the gita the uh, mahabharata because of personal reasons and then just uh, it helped me to read the book okay Okay, so uh, you being read the Bhagavad Gita, as you say. Uh, tell me, what does your version of interpretation about, or your uh, version of Bhagavad Gita? Oh uh, well, this is a very interesting question, and you know, I'd love to answer this. Uh, see, uh, I often feel uh, with uh, with the audacity of you know sounding a bit of you know preaching kind of. Uh, I I I do often feel that you know people misunderstand or misinterpret uh, the Bhagavad Gita a lot. Uh, in very specific manners, if we know, we all have uh, referred to this one single line from Bhagavad Gita that you know everything is uh, predetermined. Sab kuch to likha hua hai, jo jaisa likha hua hai, waisa hi hoga. Stuff like that. People, you know, often we see that give uh, people giving out this example. But the thing is that just beneath these lines, there is another line added, and it says that. obviously you cannot you know uh, plan your future 100% obviously you cannot change or alter your future obviously you cannot you do not have uh, you know a, a comprehensive control on your future but at the same time you can always prepare for the future because you know based on the current scenarios and the current decisions that you have taken your future can have you know three four kind of different alternate uh, realities or alternate pathways so you need to prepare yourself for each of them and based on your own decisions based on, on on your own choices the kind of path that you're taking you have to prepare yourself in that way to face such consequences you know that's directly correlated to the actions that you have made so that is something that people often miss and then there again if i talk about you know the part where uh, uh, where it's uh, where uh, we uh, the bhagavad gita when it talks about nirvana the concept of moksha that uh, you know uh, we should stay away from materialistic thing and you know we should be able to you know put a f- full focus on self growth so things like that when when uh, uh, that actually means this that you know whenever you are doing a particular thing your whole soul attention and focus f- focus should be on that particular thing it does not necessarily mean that you you know renounce all materialistic possession you renounce everything that you have hard earned or everything that you have built so far and you know go and become a sage that is not what the gita prescribes the gita rather prescribes to do whatever you are doing with utmost sincerity with utmost belief and to question yourself in your heart that before you do any action that if i am doing this is it right or wrong and that is that is not only to be judged on your personal basis but you have to be able to judge it from the you know perspective of a greater uh, greater you know uh, what to say from the perspective of a greater universe. good i mean uh, yeah universe. absolutely it should be universal okay so that means it's uh, uh, you believe that uh, karma uh, is what uh, is uh, the driving force as well as uh, uh, it is a myth that uh, you should you know uh, uh, leave everything materialistic on by you uh, it's just that what you are doing should be felt right and in good to the overall broader uh, macro section of the uh, society absolutely right? 
absolutely okay but then uh, that that also isn't it like uh, wanting moksha or uh, uh, is also a kind of uh, thing you are uh, possessing it or you you want it uh, you want to have moksha so isn't it also kind of uh, one thing which you are holding on to or is that also a myth absolutely i mean absolutely i mean that was the reason like uh, when uh, Bhishma Pitama was killed in the battle of Kurukshetra then the reason that was the rationally that was provided behind is that was this that he kept on holding on to his own self promise even when he saw that uh, you know holding on to his own promise would lead to a great uh, destruction led to a great war and even he stood on you know holding his ground he he kept on being adamant and you know holding on to his uh, promise his made to his thing. father yeah. so yeah. so that 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 what he did was because to gain you know what we say uh, you know purity or to gain piousness and then you know attain nirvana or attain moksha at the end of his life yeah. that was his reason so obviously yeah. whenever you are seeking something uh, you should always realize it in your heart that why you are doing this so that is more exactly. important and i mean even if in, if you are seeking moksha and you know it and you realize it and you accept it that yes this is something that i am seeking for myself for my you know in a way this is a uh, so even this is a sort of selfish interest for me if you know mm. that in your heart and then you want to do something that's perfectly all right but the thing is is mm. that the gita says in a way that in a nutshell it says that don't lie to your own self uh, you know uh, for you know, i would like to give a very uh, you know small and uh, tiny example it might be trivial but uh, um this means a lot to me you know we often uh, whenever we are probably moving in our car and we are stuck at a traffic signal there we often see you know beggars coming around the cars and you know knocking at the windows yeah. and asking for alms and we often hand out you know uh, a 1 rupee coin or a couple okay. of rupees or a 5 rupee or a 10 rupee note and you know some day okay. we hand uh, probably we are very happy we are we or you know we are in a very jolly sort of a mood and uh, we we are just excited and we uh, end up giving 50 rupees to a certain beggar and you know we Can feel I? good about we feel good about it that you know okay i have helped the beggar i have helped someone you know in a way that uh, normally people does not do but at the end of right. the day it's very important to think that you know the 50 rupees that i gave to that beggar that was only because uh, you know i wanted to feel good i mean in yeah. a way it's just it's satisfying your own self correct absolutely correct. and the thing is is that there is nothing wrong in doing it but you need to accept it you need to accept it with yourself that this is something that i'm doing firstly for my own self and then yeah. for the sake of others so once you okay. have once you true to yourself that is what constitutes dharma so that's what you want to say that first accept yourself and then only you can love others or do something good for others right yeah absolutely i mean the very essence of religion i mean the very essence of hindu religion i believe is to accept things that you know that to accept as the way you are i mean yeah it's really important to you know uh, believe in your heart that what you know what you are and what you are going to do what you are what are the you know uh, logic behind your every action stuff like that so uh, you yeah. should be aware in in a very simple term if i say the bhagavad gita says that you should be aware totally and that is what matters okay okay so this talking about myths and accepting ourselves um indian there is uh, no society which exists without myths and indian mythology being very ancient and enriched what is one myth if given a chance that you would like to eradicate or change and why okay so here i have been always keeping on thinking that uh, uh with no offense to anybody i know that uh, karna the character of karna in mahabharata is a very you know strong character uh, it generates a lot of empathy but what i have seen uh, you know uh, with lot of people is this that they fail to understand the fact that why karna was wrong and why he was you know slayed in the uh, battle of kurukshetra there was a reason like why he faced his death which people often miss it a uh, karna was killed because you know despite you know we all agree that he came from a lower caste and then you know despite being a sudputra he went on to become one of the 
you know, fierce, fiercest and most capable warriors of the entire world. And despite mm. that, in his entire lifetime, although he, you know, did a lot of donations, he did a lot of charity, he did a lot of good work, but he never, you know, helped the people of his own community to, you know, come forward. He never uplifted his own people. And that was because he was always concentrated. He was always centered on, you know, his own being. So in a way, he was being selfish. In a way, he did not use his potential and the talent that he, ha he had to, you know, to bring in a better cause or, a, you know, better change and, you know, to do something for the greater good. So that was one of the reasons why he was killed. And the second reason was because of this fact that, you know, uh, I, I do agree that Pandavas had also made a lot of, you know, mistakes. But uh, at a time when you need to, you know, take a side and, you know, you need to use your voice and your strength and your power in a direction, in uh, in a way or, or in, a, in synergy with energies that would help, you know, righteousness win. Uh, Karna did not do that. He even went on the action uh, extent of, you know, calling Draupadi a whore in the, uh, right. you know, uh, uh, just before the, uh, this uh, disrobing of Draupadi. So yeah. those are the kind of, you know, mistakes or the errors that he made in his entire lifetime. So that was the reason why he was slain. So obviously the character teaches us a lot. And obviously I do have a lot of respect for him, but it is really, you know, imperative that people know the reason behind his death. I mean, it was no, no, nothing like this that his death, that was futile and, you know, uh, there was no reason behind it. Krishna had explained the reasons during the, uh, you know, progress of the war uh, uh, and uh, it has been mentioned in the Mahabharata. So people who, you know, uh, really have read mythology should know this thing. And Correct. obviously anybody's, uh, you know, even... Uh, welcome or you know even uh, at the liberty to criticize krishna's uh, rational rationally behind this and you know the actions of you know the pandavas and stuff like that but uh, there is something that you know people miss out people say that uh, even pandavas made mistakes and um, in the battle of kurukshetra it was uh, the kauravas were who were only punished and they met did that but that is not the fact i mean uh, the greater punishment was for the Pandavas because of all the, you know, small, big mistakes that even they had made in their lifetime. You know, losing your kids. I mean, they, the Pandavas lost all of their kids. And, oh, you know, yes. uh, losing your kids is something more terrifying than losing your own life. And yeah, okay. that was something that the Pandavas had to live with for the entire life. So that was yeah. something that, you know, that's how karma works. You know, even the Pandavas were not sparred from... Uh, uh, despondence and you know dejection and sadness and melancholy and stuff like that so mm -hmm. it's just a you know very uh, a well balanced uh, situation that has been shown and depicted in the Mahabharata so these uh, are the sort of my myths that you know I uh, love to demystify you know if given a chance okay that's great and uh, do you think any society can work without this mythological stories i mean in any culture any society can work without this mythological stories if like we we didn't knew mahabharata we didn't knew uh, ramayana would uh, we be the same as we are uh, would our society be thinking the same maybe in any other culture you take it uh, well, uh, to be really honest, I haven't read about other cultures a lot uh, because uh, Hinduism itself is so vast that mm -hmm. so far I haven't been able to read a lot. But yeah, I have read a bit about uh, Roman mythology and, uh, you know, Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are so many similarities between their deities and our deities, uh, their stories and our stories and, you know, their forces of energy and the depiction of forces of energy in our mythology. So uh, I, I I refuse to believe that any culture can work without mythology because mythology in the way, you know, if we don't go about, you know, debating about its authenticity and stuff like that, it is a way of, you know, teaching uh, generations after generations, you know, about life, about wisdom and about, you know, okay. even to an extent decision making. So, you know, these are the kind of things that, you know, in a way, these are, you know, also a sort of history. So obviously, uh, I mean, uh, in Indian context, if we talk about, you know, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, if we take it out of our daily lives, uh, I don't think that, you know, uh, 
we can really survive because uh, although there are so many negative things going on all around in the society around us, all around the country, but at the end of the day, you know, somewhere the other way, we still believe and we still, you know, have some sort of, uh, you know, uh, lessons that uh, lessons uh, in our mind from our mythology and that probably okay. helps or you know provides us some sort of advantage to you know view even the contemporary situations and you know probably make a better judgment or stuff like that so i believe that mythology is something that teaches us so uh, no no culture can do without it but uh, doesn't it um, uh, make you confined into certain norms and certain type of thinking uh, if we tend to change it, uh, it's difficult to change. Don't you think so? See, I believe, first of all, religion and, you know, mythology, uh, not mythology, but religion as such should, should be a very private subject. I don't, to be really honest, I don't understand how religion is such a, you know, public matter. What my belief for God is, is what my, you know, the way I worship my, uh, the God that I believe or the philosophies that I, you know, follow in my life. It's a very personal choice and yeah. it's a very, you know, private kind of a thing. Yeah. So uh, I don't uh, want anybody else to interfere in it. Not, uh, you know, nobody. I mean, it's a, it's my private yeah. space. And therefore that is uh, how I believe religions should be actually handled. But sadly, uh, that is not the case. And that is never going to be as well. But, you know, I don't believe that uh, religion, you know, you know, binds you, you know, in some sort of uh, shackles because, uh, it never tells you to be a dumb or it never tells you to be, you know, uh, stubborn about things. Uh, it teaches you to be liberal and more accepting in ways. Uh, it teaches you to hear and believe and, you know, try to understand different perspectives. So that is what the uh, real meaning of religion is. And if people, every individual can be religion in just plain this way that I've said now, probably, uh, you know, things uh, like you said, you know, this sort of, you know, um, hot arguments or, you Second. know, uh, sparring yeah. things, uh, debates out of religious topics would not arise. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, if we talk about, you know, foundations and social norms or religious norms, I'm somebody who goes to the temple or lights, uh, lights the morning dia without even bathing. For me, bathing is not necessary to, you know, uh, to enter a temple. And at the same time, uh, uh, it's not necessary. I don't believe in stuff like, like you know, uh, what do we call keeping fast and, uh, you know, trying to please uh, God, God, taking one nut and stuff like that. Because uh, in a way, religion never wants uh, you to hurt your own self. And, you know, exactly. uh, it's not a kind of a deal that, you know, Chalo, main ye manat rakta ho, to meri ye cheez puri ho it's all about the things that it's you don't not today. If, uh, exactly. I mean, if I today do something good with you, it's not necessary that in return, you, you, you will do something you know, uh, good for me in, you know, uh, in a reciprocal, in a reciprocal okay. manner. Just okay. that, you know, if I do good to you, probably someday when I'm in trouble, somebody else would do good to me. And that is okay. what religion basically thinks. And I plainly and very simply understand religion as this line right. that, you know, so good, that good, and ritu- you get good from somewhere else. So yeah, that's ritual- how should be. Yes, rituals and beliefs should be personal, not, uh, uh, I mean, the way one wants to and not as per the society, which is coming or binding uh, shackles, right? Right, totally, totally. I mean, but, religion always demands it meets you. So, something that's it's not religion. Okay. So do you, do you believe that karma or uh, life after death, uh, what we are generally taught, you know, swarg lok, nark lok, uh, everything is myth according to you or not? See, uh, to all these, I have different kind of theories or different kind of, you know, imaginative narratives, imagination, imaginative narratives for these kind of things. Yeah. For me, swarg lok is something, it's a realm, it's a different sort of, you know, portal, it's a different sort of uh, you know, medium or, you know, we can say it's a different sort of realm uh, hmm. that cannot be accessed easily that uh, probably can be opened through some sort of portal uh, where, you know, the uh, uh, geographical, the political, the, you know, mythical nature, everything is totally different and stuff like that. So these are the different kind of 
uh, theories that I have, and you know, based on the the theories that I believe, uh, in my next book, I'm going to put forward certain you know concepts about Swarg Log and stuff like that. But uh, obviously, I don't believe in you know the uh, extravagant theories or extravagant you know stories of you know uh, that you know there are you know uh, there is only bliss in Swarg Log. There are apsaras dancing. There is Indra ah, exactly. sitting and you know, sipping his wine and stuff like that. No, no, uh, that's not like that. But Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, there's something else that I believe. It's a more of a, you know, uh, uh, what to say, science-backed uh, concept, which, you know, uh, if I go in here, it will be too detailed to explain. So uh, I'm anyway, uh, anyway exploring this concept in my next book. So, yeah. uh, you know. We so we know uh, your next project uh, also, by in a way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The next project, which is, you know, based on a war between two gods, Lord uh, Krishna and Lord Shiva. So it's a mythological reimagining of a story uh, based on a love story, actually. So there I, so there I have, you know, uh, you know, explored this concept. So uh, I hope, you know, readers and everyone would be Love. really glad, uh, you know, really, they would be, you know, happy to you know, read some different perspectives about stuff like uh, stuff and concept like Swart Globe, Nark Globe and, and all Yeah. That. So when we talk about religion and culture and science, it's generally a vertebral uh, tipping point for all disclosures, uh, especially in India. Uh, what do you think or how do you tackle, how do you think it should be tackled? That's, uh, you know, my uh, suggestion to this is pretty simple. Have, let religion be everyone's personal and private matters. Stay out of it. I mean, my religion is my religion. It's none of your religion. That is what I would say. <laughs> so the rules and so, regulations, you, you know, our religion or culture makes are very different for females and males. Uh, do you say it's correct or it's a myth? Sorry, I did not get you exactly. Okay, the rules and rituals uh, our religion or our culture makes are very different for females and males. So, do you accept it, or, or do you feel that is also a myth? You no, know, no. There, I mean, if we talk about rituals, so both males and females that are you know prescribed or written down in a religious text, many of them you know have scientific uh, values behind them. Uh, many of them have you know certain sort of you know rationally behind them. So. But at the same time, it's, you know, these are the kind of uh, things that, that are choices. I mean, it's hmm. written hmm. and you know, you should know the benefits, the advantages, disadvantages, and you should okay. seek answers. But nobody should, should, you know, try to force any sort of ritual upon anybody, you know. Okay. Uh, and if there is something, a ritual that is in any way, you know, impacting negatively, it's better to do away with it. But so it's, it's, it's never yeah. necessary that you, know, you need to hold on to a certain ritual if it is hurting the sentiment of even, you know, 1% of the population. If there is something of that sort, you know, it's better, according to me, strictly according to me, it's better to, you yeah. know, do off with that, uh, you know, ritual. Okay, so according to you, uh, which is one that ritual which you find a myth or not correct and, you know, which should not be followed or eradicated as per your views strictly. Nothing to hurt the sentiments of the other or others following the ritual. Okay, so for this I have to, you know, think a bit uh, because Mm -hmm. as such, uh, uh, probably, you know, the small, uh, small things like, you know, um, whenever we believe that we have done something, you know, impious or, you know, yeah, we have done something wrong and, uh, and then we, you know, try to, you know, uh, rectify it by, you know, doing some sort of uh, worship or some sort of sacrifice or some sort yes. of, you know, uh, you know, pleasing to God and stuff like that. So this is something that, you know, uh, uh, that has actually been, you know, uh, never directly prescribed uh, by Hinduism. I mean, Correct. if you have done something wrong, uh, even if you, you know, take bath with Ganga Jal every day, that's not going to, you know, wipe away your mistake. So uh, the okay. only way probably, you know, you can rectify your, or, you know, you can find penis, uh, uh, penance uh, for, you know, some sort of uh, wrongdoing is this that, you know, you try to, you know, do something which would ensure some sort of greater good. So that is mm-hmm. the only way through which, you know, you can rectify probably your wrongdoings and stuff like that. So that is something so I believe. Uh, yeah, 
it's not a barter system which uh, goes on with the god absolutely right okay um, uh, like uh, generally uh, in our mythology it's been uh, believed uh, so do you also believe that uh, women was a reason uh, behind every bloodshed war fought till date or is she the reason for giving birth to every drop of blood in the world no absolutely not even you know if anybody believes it this way this is again a misinterpretation uh, the thing is actually such you know uh, if we take the example of ravana or if we take the example of you know uh, duryodhan we see that you know in their lives they had committed a lot of you know serious uh, scenes a lot of serious crimes you know uh, as rulers they were anarchist you know uh, yeah. as administrators they were not so prolific so there was stuff yeah. like that you know uh, obviously it's now you know often represented in you know popular media in a way that you know they are born evil or you know they are uh, just evil for the sake of being Correct. evil but it's not that you know they have their own agendas they are selfish you know they they have their own you know uh, greed to fulfill so uh, those are the reasons why uh, these was ha- these wars right. happened i mean the battle of you know uh, uh, ram with ramana and the battle of kurukshetra happened because of all these reasons and the okay. violence or any sort of injustice uh, with women now if we talk about uh, dropodis can drop this context in you know uh, uh, the kurukshetra war we we'll say that you know people will say that it was big because you know uh, draupadi's uh, chirhanan happened uh, that was the uh, main reason yeah. behind kurukshetra but that was not the main reason the point i mean uh, accepted by anthropologists which has been accepted by sociologists that you know a society is best known by the way it treats its women and children right yeah yeah so, so when the more important then the most are full and then of a woman of of a nation of a, or of a kingdom is treated in a way how dopadi was treated just imagine the plight of the other ordinary women of that you know uh, beyond the point of you know uh, tolerable right hello akusha can you hear me again yes i can hear you okay uh, so yes uh, would you believe that women is not the reason behind every blood shed but uh, it is al- also a fact that always females uh, who have become or uh, given the reason to the characters to act or become god or demon what do you have to say about it is it a myth uh, or what are your inputs on it uh sorry i again did not get this question okay uh that uh it is always the female who becomes or gives the reason to the character to act or become god or otherwise so what are your inputs on it uh, there is general belief that you know a uh, female is behind uh, the person to become a uh, god or evil so you were uh, so in a way you were telling that you know females uh, it's generally perceived that females uh, 
you know are the ones that you know create a good man or a bad man a or a good man. person yes. or a evil person that's what you yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, obviously women are creators. That uh, I do believe without any doubt. And uh, secondly, you know, blaming this thing is, uh, you know, too regressive and, uh, you know, too sort of, you know, I would say, you know, male chauvinist kind of a thing. You know, uh, we often even in today's society, we hear that uh, if uh, a child has done something, which is generally... I'm talking about those regressive societies. Obviously, there are also many places where these things have come across and we have come a lot far from all this kind of stuff. But still, there are societies in India where, you know, if a child is do, has done something positive or something good, he is, you know, appreciated by his father's name that, you know, okay, uh, right. Mr. XX son has done mm -hmm. this or Mr. Mm -hmm. XX son has done this. But when you know, a child, you know, fails to do something good, then it's often, you know, it's a general consensus that you know people say uh, is his or her mother might have uh, stuff like that. So it's a you know typical regressive and you know male chauvinist Correct. statement and Correct. nothing more than that. Correct. Correct. And these kind of you know things, my response is pretty simple. I condemn that, and uh, you know I ignore these kind of things. Even you know debates on this kind of uh, stuff are totally useless. I don't believe that, you know, people should waste energy upon this kind of things. These kind of statements, if, if you know, if anybody hears this personally, you know, they should rebuke, they should, you know, rebuttal and, uh, you know, they should try to, you know, put forward the perspective, which is obviously yeah. neutral, neutral and the better perspective. And, you know, yeah. apart from that, you know, these kind of things should not, should never c come into, you know, mainstream debates and, and stuff like that. You know? yeah. These yeah. are simply, you know, bad, uh, or totally, you know, regressive statements that, you know, should be ignored and, you know, hmm. just be forgotten and, you know, not forgiven. Put an end to it. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, These days, uh, when the mythological or the legendary tales are rewritten, uh, they are generally written with the feminist lens. So uh, do a female require that certificate? Why isn't she understood uh, without being quoted? Uh, what do you have to say on it? See, here I don't uh, b uh, feel that it's a, you know, gender-based issue. I feel this is a very, you know, uh, you know, representation in any form of art or any form of media for any issues is very essential. And, you know, just this representation does not make women or women would weak. That is what I believe. You know, even, you know, very simple things like, you know, slavery or color-based discrimination where, you know, legal things for a long time until unless they became, you know, focal talking points and people started, you know, uh, talking about those things, debating upon those and uh, uh, probably writing on those kind of stuff. And then those voices were hard and, you know, uh, things like sl slavery and other things were abolished. So representation of different section of, uh, so of the society uh, may be females, women, um, females, males, uh, my, the minorities or anything. I mean, it's very essential that, you know, people put forward different perspectives. There is nothing wrong in, in it. And I do agree with your point that it's not about women. People don't understand many things without, you know, explanation and without... Uh, sometimes even without a lot of, you know, revolution kind of thing. So it's it's hmm. very human or, you know, it's a sort of, you know, evolving kind it's of... It's a good uh, it's, thing. It's, 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 it's a... No, no, it's not a good thing, but it's like, you know, it's it's how we humans are supposed to be. We cannot, you know, expect an utopian uh, society or an utopian world around us. So humans would be like this, you know, they won't believe in something and, you know, uh, something that today looks really uh, uh, sort of... Uh, ritual or sort of uh, a norm would become regressive tomorrow and only when only and but only and only when people would voice against it so this is a pretty normal thing i guess uh, you know i really believe that in the way it's really good you know that female voices are being represented in books uh, films te uh, television everywhere these days and um, these representations will only you know alter and modify and bringing changes in the thinking of so, the general public. So Correct. it's a good thing according to me. Uh
Okay. And uh, do you believe that um, Hindu culture or Indian mythology uh, goes beyond India to different mythology? Uh, like uh, we have varied cultures even in India also. So do you think that uh, everything at the end has uh, one say to it or is that again a myth? No, no, everything at the end has one say to it. Obviously, you know, if we if you even do a bit of uh, research upon uh, the Roman uh, Roman mythology or the Greece mythology, I mean, they are the most yeah. comprehensive written and, you know, as ancient, not as ancient, but almost as ancient as the uh, Hindu right. mythology. Right. So everyone you knows talks about the same basic, basic principles of truth, righteousness, goodness, lack of greed, lack of you know uh, selflessness so these are the basis that you know frames any religion or any society and that is what you know hinduism as a way of life or you know as a religion or any other religion you know preaches these basic things in different episodes and in different manners and different stories and in different you know uh, um, sort of ways that's it but the common goal is same but the end is same so Absolutely. you believe that uh, being a little selfish, no, I wouldn't say selfish, but a little self-centered, uh, accepting yourself or uh, doing things for your own self is considered um, uh, wrong in the religion. Selfishness, what do you call? You just need to be selfless if you want to be good in the eye of religion. See it. Again, it really matters what your heart sees. I mean, if your heart, I mean, these all things happen on any particular given situation. In a particular given situation, the way the choices that you have in front of you, and if you have taken the best choice that's possible that your heart is allowed, then I don't think that is something that you know that is wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you should be able to, you know, have a peaceful sleep. And uh, if you have peaceful sleep, I don't thing that you know you need to worry much okay um being labeled as the best uh, mythological um, you know author uh, is it okay for you or you would you would in future change the genre of your writing and you know a lot of people are writing indian mythology retelling indian mythology so does that add a pressure or to to your school of thoughts well, uh, yes, uh, last year uh, I won this award uh, for this book, which was for the best mythology fiction. And yeah. uh, uh, yes, there are many, you know, many authors writing in this space as of now, and it's really popular. All of the authors are doing really great. So uh, uh, coming to the second part, uh, you know, sort of pressure. No, I don't believe, you know, that I have uh, any pressure because every every storyteller, every writer has his own flair of writing and has his own, you know, uh, way of telling stories and in fact you know okay. even all the mythology writers they have different sets of you know mythological stories that they share I mean Amish Tripathi sir he shares about you know retellings and reimaginations in a very different kind of ways in a you know very believable uh, human humanly way and then there is someone like Kavita Kane who represents you know um, uh, the mythological stories from women perspectives and then there is Anand Nilkantan who represents uh, mythology from the perspectives of you know the lost sides or you know the antagonists or you know the anti-heroes or stuff like that uh, so everyone has their own you know even under the genre of mythology everyone has a sub-genre or you know a yes. subject of interest so so it's pretty I mean it's a pretty safe and you know pretty comfortable arena for all of them there's a lot of space for new authors mm -hmm. for more authors so it's it's not a sort of problem of pressure okay uh one last question uh for the session uh does science and religion um uh, combine or are on the equal or parallel path uh i'd say you know uh if we analyze and uh, go on a deep, full delve research of a mythology, we'll find many scientific things in it. But at the same time, you know, we cannot, you know, uh, religious activities or uh, religion as such is not an alternative to science, according to me. Religion okay. is more of a, I would, be, I would say religion is a philosophical science. And science is more concrete in its, you know, definitions, in its, uh, you know, hmm. uh, 
perspectives and it does not have many layers or many eyes to it it's a more of a direct and comprehensive and you know uh, fear or uh, uh, black or white kind of stuff so science so, is more concrete which i say and uh, religion is more of a philosophical kind of a thing uh, to uh, you know progress in life you need the understanding of the real science that we study that we see and to have a grasp on our own lives i believe that you need to know uh, you know uh, spiritual so these are spiritual. the these are these are two very different kind of things one is uh, in a way uh, you know completely philosophical and you know completely self introspecting kind of a thing and science is something that is based on you know um, experiments and you know real trials and right. errors okay uh, any media buzz i mean you are a media buzz author award winning author best seller author at very young age so anything you would like to add which i have not covered uh, you know in in our session anything you would like to add well uh, i just like to say you know that if any young or aspiring author is you know ha- is watching this uh, session and you know they want to write you know uh, so for them i would like to say you know that you know uh, start out with a s- story that is close to your heart uh, a story that you can believe in and uh, try to put in different kind of elements in it try to make your story that uh, travels across different genres and uh, i would really you know love to see more and more storytellers uh, and read more and more stories so if anybody is watching us today and anybody even has the craziest dream of turning into an author or uh, you know turning into a writer so please do it right away because the next 5 to 10 years would be an amazing period for authors in the country authors and the writers Well, on behalf of Ahmedabad Book Club, Karma Foundation, I would like to thank you and all our viewers for the beautiful session, for your beautiful insights, and you know, towards certain myths. I know it's difficult to uh, break all the myths, but I hope we did justice to the session. And thank you so much for your valuable time. absolutely thanks a lot uh, i'm really grateful to amdabad book club kama foundation and to you in person kosha it's uh, it's been an absolute absolute delight and pleasure you know to have this session i thoroughly enjoyed every question you know and probably you know i made sense and probably uh, uh, i really did not offend anybody these were entirely my very personal views based on the understandings that i have gained from reading and sort of analyzing uh, different uh, things from our hindu mythology so that's it and it it was totally fun it was great thank you kosha thanks for having me bye bye thank you i hope we did not offend everyone bye bye stay home stay safe and good night thank you everyone all right good night bye bye stay home bye bye